All right. So the moon and Mercury, the, uh, you know, what makes them so similar? Obviously, it's their heavy cratering, right? Um, and so we're going to study the uh, idea of cratering today by using the moon as our um, subject, our kind of case study. And then we'll apply some of these same ideas to Mercury next time. Okay, so starting with the surface features of the moon. Um, when we look at the moon, this is now the near side. The previous image I showed you was the far side, which is probably why you didn't recognize it. Um, but when we look at the near side of the moon, we see two fairly distinct collections of features or categories of features. One is the lunar highlands, which are marked by many craters, right? So these areas with many craters are all higher than the surrounding smooth regions. And these regions that are smooth and relatively free of craters are called the lunar maria. So called because when Galileo looked at them through a telescope, he thought that they looked like um, seas on the ocean. And so he thought that they were full of water. We now know that they're not, um, but the name sticks. When we take a closer look at the lunar surface as we did uh, during the Apollo missions, we find that it's um, very fine and loose. So fairly dusty uh, lunar soil, which is also called regolith. The more common word for it is regolith. And the lunar surface is made mostly of silicate rocks. So similar types of rocks as the surface of the earth, but chemically different in important ways, which we'll discuss on, on uh, Wednesday. So in the highlands, uh, the type of rock tends to be a low density anorthosite. Um, this isn't a particularly important word except to say it's not a lava rock. So this is not the type of lava that, uh, rock that we find in the maria. The maria are made of high density basalt and that's the same sort of rock that you find in the uh, Cascade volcanoes. So when you go hiking and you know there's lava flows, you're seeing the same kind of rock that's in the lunar maria. Um, this footprint is in the lunar maria. So the, the image looks really light and bright right? Uh, but the photographs of the moon's surface can be deceiving in certain ways uh, because of the camera settings. Um, so as you know, if you try to take a, a photo with one light, um, with one type of light environment, and then you keep the same camera settings and move to a different light environment, then your photos will look completely washed out. Um, so many people do not realize that the, the true color of the moon is actually fairly dark. And so here it is seen from uh, a spacecraft that's between the earth and the sun. So we're seeing both the full moon, albeit the back of the moon and the full earth from the perspective of that spacecraft. And when you see it against the earth, you can appreciate how dark the moon really is. So these lunar maria, these dark uh, volcanic rock patches where are they mostly found? Mostly B, that the Maria are mostly on the side facing Earth. And that's exactly right. So the far side of the moon, right, the image that we're seeing here on the right, um, we can see perhaps one, two-ish Maria here. Um, but the near side has significantly more. And so why is that the case? I'm gonna give you a hint here. So the remember the rock in the highlands is made of a low density type of rock, whereas the rock in the maria is made of a higher density type of rock. So just um, think of what possibilities, what ideas you have for why there might be fewer maria on the far side of the moon. All right, so one idea is maybe the maria have more protection uh, on the earth facing side from impacts because the earth would be in the way um, and therefore not allow as many impacts on that side. Um, one other idea is that maybe the Earth's gravity um, caused the lava to be pulled toward that side more when the moon was still molten. Yeah, maybe the, during the moon's formation process that there could have been some um, pull of more of that lava material toward the Earth for whatever reason, maybe the, um, you know, kind of an accident of the impact. So um, all of these are, are valid um, ideas. And what we know now from doing detailed measurements of the moon's um, mass distribution, so measuring the gravity on different parts of the moon, is we know that actually the, the overall mass distribution is pulled toward the Earth. 
And the earth, um, remember the moon pulls on earth to produce the tides, right? Elongating the earth kind of in a football shape uh, toward the moon. Well, the earth also exerts a tidal force on the moon. And so when the moon was molten, the earth was also able to stretch it into that football type shape. And the higher density material uh, was gravitationally attracted more strongly toward the earth than the lower density material. So overall, the center of mass is shifted toward the earth. And therefore, this um, lava was simply closer to the surface. So when you measure the thickness of the moon's crust, uh, the crust is actually thicker on the far side than it is on the near side. And so any continued geological activity, any continued lava flows have an easier time um, pushing through that thin crust. 